Hey guys, what is up? Well, after 10 years, our Norcold absorption refrigerator has finally died. <laughs> but we're gonna have the cooling unit replaced by an Amish cooling unit. Details coming up on RV Street. All right, let's get right to it. As many of you know, uh, we are full timers and we have a Norcold N822 absorption refrigerator and we love it. I mean, this thing has worked flawlessly uh, for years. It's a single freezer door and a single refrigerator door unit. It's an absorption refrigerator. So it can run on regular 120 outlet uh, when we're plugged into shore power, it can run off the generator or it can also run off of propane and 12 volt uh, when we're boondocking or when we're spending the night at a cracker barrel or anything like that where we want to be self-contained. Now we do not want or even have entertained installing a residential fridge or even a 12 volt fridge. Now I know a lot of you do have a residential refrigerator and you wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> I mean, that's cool with me. But the way Joni and I travel, I want the option of being able to run propane. I don't wanna to have to think about or worry about upgrading my battery bay, upgrading my inverter, or possibly even installing a separate dedicated inverter to run a residential fridge. Normally I'll set this on about seven uh, on the control board and it'll keep that thing at 34, 35 degrees all day long and keeps everything rock solid in the freezer. Now when we're traveling the night before, we'll pump that thing up to like nine. So when we wake up in the morning, that refrigerator will be like 28, 29 degrees. And so if we're gonna be traveling two, 300 miles that day or whatever, we just keep that door closed and it'll keep that food cold all the way to where we arrive at our, ne our next destination. Now our fridge did not perform well by accident. I have done a lot of upgrades that makes it perform really well. So let's go over these upgrades. First, let's cover air circulation. Let's go inside. So like I said, we have a single door freezer up here single door refrigerator down here and on air circulation you can see right up here i installed two 12 volt fans now unfortunately this unit right here is no longer available or is, and the company's not in business but these units are really sweet and easy to install many folks will add the same thing by installing some computer fans up here. Uh, there's all kinds of different 12 volt fan options out there, but I do have one that's very similar to this in my Amazon store. It has three fans. You can turn it off. It's controlled right here by its own switch on and off. It has a fuse. I tied it into the light switch up above here that where the power supply is. So now instead of the light being on the roof of the refrigerator, the light is right here. If I want these fans running, and I normally do, I just turn these fans on and those fans are on with the door closed. So it's always forcing cold air down to the bottom of the fridge. Now, like I said, I tied mine into the light. So we have this wire right here coming off the, the top of the fan and on the drip tray you can see the drain line right there. So this wire comes down and goes through that drip tray, the hole in the drip tray, and then through the tube on the, on the drip line that goes to the back of the refrigerator. Now let's go to the back of the fridge outside. So here is the access panel to my refrigerator. And you see my drip line right here? Normally this drip line right here goes into a little drip tray right back up into here. Well, I removed that drip tray and I continued this drip line and I went to Home Depot 
and I bought some brass fittings right here and I made my own kind of a T where this is the wire that comes out of uh, the top of the fans that I showed you inside, okay? So on the other end of this fitting, I ran more tubing. So now during uh, the day, you know how when it powers down, it'll start to somewhat defrost. This water just comes and drains right through this T and drips out on the side of the motorhome. And this wire right here ties into the 12 volt on the control panel up there. Uh, so it has constant 12 volt where it can be running all day long. Now, while we're in here, this is the control box up here. And you can see that I've got everything disconnected. I've got the AC plug disconnected. I've got the igniter wire disconnected up in here, the 12 volt and all that. Because again, this unit has died and it was leaking ammonia. And when you have leaking ammonia, you not only know that the refrigerator has died, but that's how fires can start. So if you ever have your absorption refrigerator starting to leak ammonia, you just turn it off right then and there. Unplug everything, don't use it again. But getting back to air circulation, you can see that I've also installed two 12 volt fans back here. Now this one here I've made loose so I can just kind of show you. I made this little T bracket down there and these fans go right up against that uh, bracket. Now these fans draw air from the outside and they blow upwards over the boiler tubes and then it continues all the way up through the top of the roof. Having these 12 volt fans back here are essential to keeping the hot air from uh, accumulating back here and hurting the performance of the refrigerator. These things make all the difference in the world, but there's more. You have to channel this air. What I've done here on mine, on, the, on this very front lip right here, if you look up underneath here, you can see this piece of half inch blue insulation board. You buy this at Home Depot. And what I did is I cut that piece, the full width of this door, because there was a void area right in behind here and air would get trapped in the sidewall right here. So by putting this damper uh, board right here, when these fans kick on, it hits that board and it's like a ramp, it's somewhat angled and it hits that and it pushes that air up and right up against those boiler tubes and it forces that air up over the boiler tubes and on up to the condenser fan up on top, which I'll show you in a minute. You have to channel this air and force it in the areas that you want to keep the refrigerator working it in top performance. But there's another problem that happens up on top of the refrigerator too. Let's go on the roof and I'll show you. Okay, well here we are on top of the roof and this is my cover over the top of the uh, refrigerator. So I need to take that off first. Okay, so here is the top of the fridge. And at the factory, the, the screening that's on top of here is actually sealed all the way around into a, uh, this uh, mounting, plastic mounting bracket here. So in order to do the work that I needed to do inside here, is I had to take my razor knife and I just cut all along here and removed the old screen. Then I came back with some new screening material that I bought at Home Depot and I just tape it right around the outside here. That allows me to get back in here if I ever need to and do any maintenance. And here's the screen material here. Let's throw that off to the side. And like I showed you underneath, where I took some half inch blue board insulation that I got at Home Depot. I put that blue insulation all back in here also. All along here, on the sides, and in the front here. Because if I didn't do that, this was a, a big void area right here that goes all the way back into this area and over here into the crown of the roof. And it would trap uh, hot air. 
And that way now, when the air comes up from the bottom over these condenser fins, it just funnels right out through here and straight out the top. As you can see in these two diagrams, the top area of the fridge, when installed, has these void areas that are shown in red. These open areas trap hot air and don't allow a nice flow of cooling air to flow up and over the condenser fans and out the roof. So this is why you have to have some insulation board to block off these areas that are prone to trapping hot air. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate something here, uh, a little bit more emphasis on if you have your refrigerator in a slide, okay? So let's just say that this is the side of your slide and you have your bottom access door down here to the fridge. And then up on top, you have your other access point where it's supposed to circulate out this way, correct? Well, you have a void area up here too on that slide. The, these uh, refrigerators that are in slides are particularly difficult to get uh, airflow through there for the reasons that I said, it gets trapped up in there on the top of the slide. And that area can be six, eight, 10, 12 inches sometimes. And air just sits up in there and it hurts the performance of the refrigerator. So what do you do? Well, you get on a ladder and you remove this upper door right up here, that access door, you remove the door. And then the same principle that I showed you up on top of ours, you take some blue board and you put it at an angle, you foil tape it, cut it to size, foil tape it, just above those condenser fins, okay? That way, when your fans on the bottom are blowing upwards, it's gonna hit that ramp and force that air right out that top access door. It's going to make a huge difference in the way that this refrigerator uh, will perform. You want that air to go over the cooling, the boiler tubes, up over the condenser fins and right out the door. And that constant circulation is really gonna improve the performance of the fridge. Now you would think that they would take care of these things at the factory when they're building these trailers and motor homes and all that. I mean, it clearly shows in the install directions about these baffle void areas. They, they, those areas trap that heat. And the way you're supposed to install these is to not have that void area available there. Do they install them at the factory? No. Should they? Yes. Uh, will your refrigerator run without doing that? Yeah, of course it will. But it's not gonna last as long and it's not gonna perform as well because there's so much heat back there. It's just gonna have a hard time cooling. Okay, that covers the uh, basics of air circulation. Very important things to do. Now let me show you the next thing that I did. The next thing I did uh, is I installed what they call an ARP unit. You can see it right here. It's also known as a fridge defend. And what it basically does is it controls the temperature of the furnace right over here, the heat stack. Many of you probably have experienced, know, or have heard of uh, the recalls that happens on these Norcold and Dometic uh, absorption refrigerator. They have been, <laughs> throughout the years, uh, something will be wrong, the factory issues a little fix or a clamp or a chip, and uh, quite honestly, most of those never really work very well. Uh, so I didn't even wanna take that chance. I went ahead and ordered an ARP fridge to fend and wired that in because that pretty well just overrides all the factory settings for safety. It controls the temperature on the furnace stack, okay? Now that's all I'm gonna say about that. If you wanna know more about the ARP Fridge Defend, you can look it up for yourself and do all that homework here on your own. I mean, you need to learn that if you're interested in putting one of those in. So when we go back with this uh, Amish a cooling unit, it is much more robust. It's heavy duty, and I'm not going to put the ARP back in. I'm going to go back and wire it to factory. I'm going to have these two fans down here, and I'm also going to have a fan up on top. 
You'll see all that when we do that install. What I need to do is replace this whole cooling unit. And that's what we're going to do. Now, I could have done this myself, but we're up here in Maine and we're getting ready. We're actually leaving a little earlier than uh, scheduled. Normally we come down from Maine to Mass, across New York, Ohio, down into South Indiana and shoot straight down to RGV for winter. But this time we're taking a little bit of a detour. And instead of going down to uh, Indiana, we're gonna go across Indiana. Well, here we are at JC Refrigeration in Shipsawana, Indiana. Nice big building and big bays and real nice access to get in here. We had our coach and towed and Look at the size of this parking lot. I mean, it's really easy to get in here. Now, once you pull in, he said he likes to have people pull over here to the very right. That way, as other people come in, they have a lot of area here to swing into these bays here. He said, we have another place around the back. He said, they have a 30 amp spot in the back and you can go back there and plug in if there's nobody back there. Then the back of the building here, they of course have the two bays and they have this little waiting area here with a bench, a table, and they offer 30 amp electric and water. We came here all ready to go. We have full water. Uh, we didn't really even need electric, but hey, it's sitting there. Why not? But what I wanted to show you here, this is the back of the property. And look at all these RV cooling units. <laughs> this is all these folks do. But this is where refrigerators go and die. Right here. This is what we're replacing. Right there. So here's some more refrigerators. Some are just the cooling units. Some they yank out the whole darn box. So there's where we're parked for the evening. And uh, you can see I'm not level, but you know what? It doesn't matter. My refrigerator's not working, so I didn't even care. So we'll pick it up in the morning. Okay, well, they got the refrigerator out of the hole here. And this is another view right here of how I did that baffle work right up in here to keep that heat from getting trapped up on top. So this airflow will go right on out the top of the, the condenser fins. But the inside of the cabinet looks really good. So what they're doing right now is they are getting ready to pull this old unit out. And you can see that they put quilts and everything down on the floor here uh, to protect the flooring. And they're doing all this right in the motorhome. What we've done is we decided to go ahead and put a new furnace and a new burner on it also. He said that when uh, these things leak, the ammonia many times will get up in this furnace area. So we're gonna go ahead and just replace the furnace, the element, and the burner. All right, well, here's the unit. Uh, it's just about ready to go in. All right, so now we're bringing the new unit in. All right, well, they got the all the unit all put in. There's my fan at the top. And they're gonna put it in the hole and finish wiring it up. From the time that I pulled the RV into the bay at 6.20 a.m. in the morning, uh, I was out of there at 7.20. I mean, can you believe that? These guys were just like, bam, bam, bam. They, this is what they do. They knew exactly what to do. So after that, I pulled the RV out of the bay and put it back again in the back of the property. I hooked up 30 amp because they wanted me to sit there and test it for about two to three hours on 30 amp and propane to make sure that everything was working right. And everything worked out just fine. And we pulled out of there, I think somewhere around 11, 12 o'clock. Let's go to the back of the fridge because I want to show you the final product. 
<laughs> so here we are at the back of the fridge and you can see right now that my fans are running. But this is the wire right here, comes from the uh, inside fan that's up on top of the fridge, remember? They just continued this here and wired it in to the control panel over here. You see this uh, white wire bundle right here? That wire comes from the fan that's up top right underneath the condenser fins. So they brought that wire down and then took the wires from these fans and hooked them up. So now when that thermo switch up on top gets to a certain temperature, all three fans will come on. Also, you'll notice that these fans are now nice and solid. Remember the bracket that I showed you that I made? Well, on the back of these fans on the bottom here, I use a really uh, super adhesive double-sided tape. It's not the kind of junk you buy at Walmart, but it's in my Amazon store, but it's, it's a tape. Uh, this stuff will hold a TV on a wall. I mean, it's really strong. So they're nice and tight now and I'm really pleased with the way this whole job came out. One last thing here is I took off that old nasty drain tube here and I put on a new drain tube. So now when I put the door back, I just have a little hole here in my bug screen and I just push that through. And if you guys do not have bug screens on your refrigerator access doors, I'm gonna tell you, you need to do this. Otherwise you're gonna get mud daubers and bees and all kinds of things flying in there and building nests and stuff and just wreaking havoc uh, with your uh, refrigerator. So make sure you do that if you haven't done that already. And then I just pull that through and lock it in and we're done. So just as a summary, here again is a close-up view of how my 12 volt fans are going to be working now. When they installed the new cooling unit, it has a thermo switch welded right on the boiler tube. So as the furnace gets up to the right temp, any further rise in temperature, the thermo switch kicks on and the new 12 volt fan up top and my two fans below kick on and stay on as needed. This will keep the correct temperature. This additional feature in these three fans is why I chose not to reinstall my ARP uh, fridge defend unit. In my opinion, it's just not necessary now. Well, it's nine o'clock the next morning and we stayed at the campground last night and I ended up putting a sensor in the refrigerator and I got another sensor here in the freezer. And looky here, refrigerator's 34 degrees and the freezer is five degrees. We're back in business, yahoo! Really well organized shop. Everybody knows their job. Here's all their raw materials right here. Here they have the uh, tubing cutter. See, so although this lady's big tubes along here and have a chop saw here and they cut them right to length. And you can see he's got his jig right there. This is just so cool. I mean, they've got these jigs where they bend all this stuff and they have them all lined up. They're all exactly the same. And like I said before, this material, this gauge material right here that they use on these units are a lot thicker and uh, it's more uh, industrial built much better materials. This is a Robotech bender. Isn't that cool? It automatically feeds. Very cool. And here they got some kind of a, they got tubing on a spooler here and it goes on around over to that machine there. They also have an option of where you can install uh, a compressor. Um, there's more information on their website about that. I just chose not to go that route. There's two big uh, pallets full of them. So they're, they're very well stocked. Uh, I'm just sitting here looking at all what they have here. Th this is a full blown fab shop where they make these units and they keep all the parts and pretty impressive. 
and he's setting up here for a robotic welder. He puts that tubing in a jig and clamps it all down. So once all the units are all bent and welded up and all of that, before they go into the paint booth, they put them in this uh, furnace right here and bring it up to temp and it burns off all of the debris and oil and all that stuff and prepares them to be painted. So once they come out of the furnace and it burns off all the impu impurities, what they do is they take them to the next stage here and they drop three at a time. This is, the, this is basically a big paint bucket and they just drop three uh, cooling units in at a time and then they raise them up and then they bring them over here and let them dry. After they painted them, they're brought over here and this guy does one more shot to make sure that everything is fully covered. So once all these units are all ready to go and painted, this is the last stage that they go through before they go into the warehouse. This is where they test them for any leaks or anything like that. So here we have 120 and 12 volt compressor HVAC units. Okay, well this is the final resting place of all of the uh, new units. Right now we're at about September 22nd or so. And he was telling me that by around November, they really like to have this area all empty. And it's actually really low right now, he said. And they even have some units up in there once November comes, it pretty well slows down. Of course, it's snowing and very cold up here. And so they'll work between uh, December and probably late March or early April. And they're doing nothing but making units. And this whole room will be packed, getting ready for the next uh, season. Before I cover the price and the invoice of what I paid, I would just want to take a moment to say thank you to all my fans and all of you who use my Amazon store. For everything that you need, whether it's RV related or not, every day, Joni and I just are amazed on how uh, loyal you guys are. When you need something on Amazon, you go to our store first, and if we have it in our store, great, but if not, you continue to shop on uh, Amazon like you normally would, you put it in the cart and check out. It's a great way to say thank you, Martin. Thank you for taking the time to making these videos and helping the RV community. If you're new to my channel, the link to my Amazon store is down there in the description text. So thank you guys so much. Okay, let's go over the invoice and what this cost me and stick around because I got some other important details that you need to know about uh, if you're gonna decide to do this. Okay, so here's the invoice. And the first line item right here is the replacement of the cooling unit for a Norcold 822. The unit itself was $740. Then the fan, the ventilation fan kit, that's the fan that they put right underneath the condenser fins. They charged me 40 for that. The heating element was $40. The burner was $75. And the labor was $250. You add the tax, and the total right here is $1207.65. This unit and the work they did comes with a, th a three year warranty. And for another fee, you can extend that warranty. Uh, I chose not to do that. All their cooling units are handmade with thick walled steel tubing, fully tested and more industrial than the ones that you would buy brand new from uh, the Norcold fam uh, factories. Not only saved a ton of money, but got a much, much better unit. I I'm just so happy with this unit. Okay, let's get to the important details. If you have an absorption refrigerator and that cooling unit needs to be replaced, you can do this on your own. I mean, they can and do ship these units to the end user. 
And on their website, they've got videos for all these different units. These are very detailed uh, videos. So you, I mean, they show you step by step how to do it. You could watch one of these videos and just ascertain, you know, is that something that you could do? Uh, on a level of one to 10 of difficulty and 10 being the most difficult, I would rate the install on a DIY probably around a five or a six, somewhere in there. Now, when you go to their website, you can see all the options uh, for their gas and electric absorption refrigerator cooling unit replacements. I mean, <laughs> it's astounding uh, how many different models they got there. So more than likely, uh, they're gonna have yours. Uh, they also have on their website their Dutch Air HVAC uh, units. Uh, I chose not to do that, like I said, uh, but it is another option. It's, it's a good option for some people. They're more expensive to do, but you probably should ch check that out too to see if that is an option that you're interested in. Now, if you are not uh, capable or you're a little afraid of doing the install on your by yourself, no problem, make it a trip, you know? Uh, it's a great place to go to. Uh, you're about 60 miles or so from Elkhart up there uh, where they make all the RVs. And uh, Shipsawana is a great little town uh, where you could spend a couple, three days, get the unit fixed and uh, have a good time. In my opinion, there just is no better place to have your cooling unit replaced or have it worked on. They also do solar installations. I don't know anything about that, but again, that's all on their website. Now, I just want to make sure you guys know I am not affiliated with this company, but they're great folks. Very professional, uh, very fast, as I said, and reasonable. And uh, I'll put a link down below in the description text where you can get all the other information. Now, if you decide to uh, have your unit replaced, uh, you need to make an appointment. And especially during the peak times, which is late spring, summer, and all the way through late fall. So be sure to call them and lock in your date and time. There's plenty of campgrounds uh, very close to their facility. We stayed at Shipsawana South Campground on 1105 South Van Buren Street. Uh, we paid $45 a night for full hookups and a pull through. They were a mile and a half away from JC uh, Refrigeration. But there are a lot of other campgrounds around there too. And we checked one other one and they were about the same price. So it's, you know, 45, 48, uh, lots of RVs up there, lots of campgrounds. So when you make your appointment for your install, make sure you book your appointment uh, for the campground also. You shouldn't have any problem doing that. Uh, one note here uh, in Shipsawana on Sundays and Mondays, the town is pretty dead. <laughs> Everything is closed. But Tuesday through Saturday, man, that thing is, they got all kinds of stuff going on there. They have an Amish marketplace. They have a flea market. They have restaurants and all kinds of stuff. You can even get a buggy ride. You can do all kinds of stuff up there. I want to say thank you to Jeremy at JC Refrigeration for approving uh, and allowing me to go through and uh, doing filming of the factory and their whole fab shop. Uh, it was eye-opening to me, too. Uh, so I really want to thank you, Jeremy. Kudos to you. If you want to learn more about how to take care of your RV or install upgrades, just click my logo right under this video, and that will take you to my YouTube homepage. On my homepage, you'll see the Playlist tab. Click that, and every video I've ever done will be right there on that page in different categories. Or as another option, you see that magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner? Click inside there and type what you're looking for. If I've done a video on that subject, it will list it. Well, that's it for now. I hope this video will be helpful if your absorption refrigerator cooling unit gives up the ghost like mine did. Don't give up. Don't get depressed. Go up and get a new unit, save a bunch of money, and this thing, will you'll be totally happy with it. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.